Friends, my name is Kim and I hope you're having a fabulous day. If you are interested in true crime stories like I am, I hope that you consider hitting that subscribe button. But either way, thanks for being here. Today we're doing something a little bit different. The month of April was National Child Abuse Prevention Month. Now, ow. Now I know it is not April, but I got a little bit behind with the Letitia lives and so I did want to still do this case. You guys know me, I am always bringing cases of harm against children to you. I do this because I believe these kids deserve to have their stories told. Also, it's always in my mind that as a viewer, you will be inspired. You see a child being hurt, you'll actually speak out. And that is exactly what today's video is all about. A mom, a manager, a hero. But first, a word from our sponsor. I wanna share with you a new amazing product I found in the fragrance category. This happens to be Scentbird's new sister company, and you all know them, I love them. They've been a sponsor for a long time. Drift creates air care products for your car and your home. All the materials they use are sustainable and their scents are made from natural, essential, and fragrant oils. Their products are just around $9 for wood and metal and $14 for stone. I have the scent Royale. This one, oh my God, it smells amazing. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. You just wait. Oh my God, it smells so good in here. What is this? This is so good. I love this. I, I absolutely love it. it. This is just the scent of the month and it smells so good. It has the scent of jasmine, apple, sandalwood. I mean, just all the, the warm scents. What's crazy is I have car in mind when I'm smelling this and it just has that like really earthy, I don't know. It just smells amazing. And it's a lot more attractive than those trees that you hang from your car. Like this is beautiful. Highly recommend it. What's cool about their car fresheners is that you can get them as a subscription. First you receive the starter kit which this is magnetic and so you'll receive both of these in your starter kit and then you get monthly refills of your cartridge. They last around 30 days. But the best part is is that they have the scent of the month, which is a new limited edition scent. It could be a new scent every, you don't have to pick, or you can go in and pick your favorite fragrances. They're inspired by the season and the memories and emotions attached to it. With scenting and environment, nose blindness becomes a real thing. So scent of the month also gives you some variety. So it's something new for your nose every month. It helps Drift stick to its sustainability message and promote almost made to order products. Their subscription is very flexible. You can change your scent um, choice, your delivery frequency, or cancel your subscription at any time. Make sure you use my code Kimberly55 for 55% off at Drift for your first month. That's Kimberly55 at Drift.co for 55% off. I will also have it linked below and a pinned comment. Thanks to Drift for sponsoring today's video. On January 1st, 2021, the Orange County Sheriff's Office received a 911 call from the manager of the Mrs. Potato Restaurant in Orlando, Florida. The call was placed by the manager. Now, before I tell you all the details, I wanna point out that the manager wasn't even scheduled to work that night. A coworker had called in sick, so she had taken that shift, which is amazing. I think sometimes things just happen for a reason. I don't know what the reason is, but it's just 
Anyways, around 10.30 p.m., she was in the kitchen and she realized that the table of four only had three meals being sent out to them. Because of this, she went out to the dining room area to ask if there was a problem with the order, if perhaps that one of them was missed. It happens all the time. The family of four was sitting at a six-seated table, a six-top table, and as they approached, she realized something was wrong. Something was off. There was a mom and a four-year-old little girl on one side of the table sitting next to each other. On the other side of the table was a man and a young boy. The first thing she noticed was that there was an empty chair between the man and the boy. Also, the mom, stepdad, and little girl seemed very happy. They were eating and chatting and having a great time. If not for the young boy sitting there so isolated, they looked normal. But the boy did not look normal, who Flaviani thought was about seven or eight years old. Something was off. He was by himself and he was being completely ignored. He had smashed himself into the smallest space against the wall, looking like he was trying to disappear. She said that the boy had a hoodie, a mask, and glasses, so she could see very little of his face. No one else wore masks or dressed the way that he was dressed. Arriving at the table, she asked if everything was okay with the order and if they wanted to add a meal so the little boy could have something. The man, who we now know is Timothy Lee Wilson II, told her that the little boy would be eating his dinner later at home. He's not gonna eat with the family. He doesn't get a meal. Obviously, this is strange because the young boy, who is now known as 11-year-old, we'll call him Alex, was having to sit and watch his mom, his stepdad, and his little sister eat while he had nothing. The manager is a mother of two girls. They were 18 and 21 at the time, but she couldn't help but think that the little boy was in danger. She has since said that she had a storm of emotions in her when looking at Alex. She could see a scratch on his forehead between his eyes. After he looked to the side, she could see a bruise on the right side of his face from his eye down to his cheek. She backed away a little but kept watching as when Alex moved his arms, she could see the beginning of a bruise on his arm as well. The manager took a regular piece of paper and wrote these words, are you okay on it? As luck would have it, the family was at the only table in the dining room where she could hold up a piece of paper without the family seeing. The mom, Kristen Nicole Swan, had her back to the manager and there was a refrigerator blocking the stepdad's view. So she stood about eight feet back and raised the sign. First, the little boy shook his head. Yes, he was okay. But Flaviani said he didn't fool her. She knew that there was more to the story and she watched and it was there was something off. Alex was keeping eye contact with her the entire time. So she turned the paper over and instead wrote, do you need help? She said Alex finally shook his head yes and raised his shoulders in a shrug yes. She quickly wrote okay on the note to show him, letting him know that she was going to help him. Can you imagine being that manager? How brave and how bold, you know? I, oh, hats off. She said that she called the owner at home first to notify her because they have a camera system and she knew that the manager would see that the police are gonna show up. She didn't want to freak her out. The owner said that since the restaurant closes at 11, she usually logs into the camera systems around that time and makes sure that everything is okay and there is no problems with closing down the restaurant. The owner said that when she answered the phone, uh, the manager was talking so fast, explaining about the boy, the sign, and what she was going to do about calling the police. When she called 911, she explained the lack of food, the weirdness, and most importantly, the bruises on this little boy. 
One of the kids is with a lot of bruises on his arms and on his uh, face. Okay. And the parent is not done uh, giving food for him, but is giving to the another kid that are with them. And I write in another paper if he needs help again. And he uh, make me a sign that, yes, he needs help. So I don't know what to do. I'm super concerned, and I don't know what to do. Can you give me some advice what I, what I can do? The dispatcher told her that obviously she couldn't stop them from leaving, but the police would need the family to still be there when they arrive. She said she was waiting for the police. She let the other employees know that she what was happening, and she asked the waitresses to slow down to take their time so the police would have a chance to get there. She said they kept the desserts in the kitchen for an extra couple minutes, and she had their waitress handling other tables. Basically, they were just ignoring them purposely. She called back the owner of the restaurant and told her, if the police didn't get there in time, I'm grabbing the boy. What the heck? She was not playing. She did not want this boy to leave with his family. She knew in her gut that there was something going on. The owner told her to call the police back and tell them that things would escalate if they didn't arrive. She later said she hoped that the threat of escalation would get the police to the restaurant quicker. There was no need to call them again because just after they got off the phone, the police showed up. The manager was outside waiting for the police and explained exactly what she knew. She later said that the police went in and partially separated the family. They pulled the boy to the side and started talking to him. When the police arrived and saw the bruises, they called for an ambulance. Eventually, the little boy and his younger sister were taken to the hospital for a full evaluation. Flaviani, the manager, went back inside and had the kitchen make a cheeseburger for the little boy. But when she brought it back out and handed it to him, he just passed it to his mom. We later found out that this winning combo of mom and stepdad were withholding food. It had been five days since he had eaten, but he still couldn't accept the cheeseburger. That's how beaten down he was. Later, one of the rescue workers explained that Alex took off his hoodie. His forearms were completely black and blue, from the elbow to the wrist, on the back of both arms, like from holding them up in a defensive position. The police arrested Timothy, and after the kids were released from the hospital, they were taken to foster care by CPS. The special victims unit interviewed Alex and his little sister, who we're going to call Abby. Apparently, Abby was Timothy's child, but Alex was not, and we know what that means. Abby seemed to have not been abused. She didn't have any evidence of abuse. When looking at Timothy's history, they interviewed his ex-wife, Amanda Powell, and she had a lot to say. Back in 2006, Amanda and Timothy had been married and moved to Washington because he was in the Army and was stationed at a naval air station, uh, what is it called, Whidbey Island. Timothy was a level E-5, an aviation mechanic. At his trial, his lawyer said that he had been honorably discharged. Amanda said they were only married for about a year and he was controlling and abusive. She said he was very rough on her two young sons. They were about two and four years old at the time. She tried at first to explain to Timothy that she wasn't comfortable with how he disciplined her sons, especially because he was not the father. She said Timothy wouldn't let her use the car or even talk with the other military wives. And then he started to hit her young sons with a belt. To be clear, these were not his sons. And she thinks that is key. She said he threatened her daily. He hit her and tried to choke her. She said no more. She also told him if he did it again, he was going to regret it. Well, he definitely did it again. They always do. She promptly broke his nose with a glass top 
um, jewelry box. Amanda had scratches and scrapes because they had been, you know, tussling to use her word. But when the military police showed up, they arrested her. As soon as Timothy dropped the charges, Amanda was released from jail. She took her sons and she got the hell out of there, going back to her home in Alabama. She filed for divorce. When she read about Timothy's arrest, she said she was not surprised at all and said that it was probably because Alex wasn't his son. She told the Daily Mail, Quote, when you marry someone, you take their kids in. You don't treat them like they're different, unquote. And that, that's well said, Amanda. The investigators talked to Alex and Abby, and what they learned was shocking. Apparently, they uh, were living in a hotel, but I couldn't get clarity on how long or what the situation was. Alex said he was uh, usually kept in the hotel room next door, which was used for storage. Duct tape had been placed over the peephole and he was routinely deprived of food and drinks. Why? It's just mean. He was forced to do military style exercises four to five times a week, squats, push-ups, mountain climbs, push-up planks, and toe lifts. He was sometimes hung upside down by his feet in their closet and beaten with a wooden broom. On Christmas Day, they had handcuffed him to a furniture dolly and made him work to get the key and released himself before he could open up his presents. The cruelty does not stop. It is, it's just heartbreaking. The search warrant recovered various weapons used on Alex, a bent metal pole, a wooden broom, a dolly cart, handcuffs, a green ratchet straps that were used to tie him up. When their car was searched at the Mrs. Potato restaurant, they found that the straps were in the car. The day they went to the restaurant, he had, quote, misbehaved. So they made him go with them and watch them eat, but could not join in. At the hospital, they found that he had a black eye, a broken arm, and was 25 pounds underweight. He told them he usually went without food for three or four days. Quote, if I don't do something I was supposed to do, I had to exercise and I don't get to eat anything all day. If I do things right, I get to eat and not do exercises, unquote. Alex told this to the investigators and I'm sure they were like, what the heck? On the days without food, his parents would come into his room at night to make sure he had, hadn't snuck any food. Timothy told him he placed, quote, spy cameras to monitor him. Who does this sound like? You guys leave it in the comments. You guys know exactly who I'm talking about. Deprived him from food, beat him, and had cameras. Couple cases will come to mind, I'm sure. Timothy hung Alex upside down by his ankles using that green wretched snaps for about 20 minutes in late December after he was unable to hold a handstand. What? Did he steal something? Did he say a cuss word? No, he just couldn't do a handstand. Timothy and Kristen met in Alabama and moved to Florida together. At his trial, his lawyer talked about what a bad child hood he had. It's learned behavior and so you repeat the bad behaviors. So in the trial they pointed that out that he had a bad childhood and how he was just doing what he knew. Apparently his parents treated him similar to how he treated Alex. He left home at 17 and said he was um, SA'd as a child. Kristen was married to Alex's dad, but they had split up before his birth in October of 2009. He filed for divorce and put, quote, she committed adultery for the reason why they were splitting up. When all of this came to light, the father, Heath Lewis, this is Alex's biological dad, said that he hadn't been in his son's life for the last six years because he had a bad relationship with his ex-wife. Just after this happened, he petitioned for custody of Alex, and it was granted. He did get custody of Alex. According to Flaviani, the manager, Heath called her to thank her for saving his son's life, and she did save that little boy's life. You cannot tell me anything different because 
it was escalating. It was getting worse. He was going to either starve to death or be beaten to death one way or another. She absolutely saved this little boy. We probably would have been talking about a potential homicide investigation if she had not intervened when she did. Timothy was charged with two counts of false imprisonment of a child under the age of 13, three counts of aggravated child abuse with a weapon, four counts of aggravated child abuse, and one count of child neglect. He pled not guilty. After two hours of deliberation, the jury found him guilty on all counts. Throw away the key. This man is awful. Kristen Swan was charged with child neglect. That was Alex's mom. She was also charged with aggravated child abuse and failure to report child abuse. She took a plea deal when she pled guilty to aggravated child abuse and failure to report child abuse by a household member. She was given a 364 days in jail, 14 years of probation, and given an order to have no contact with any children under the age of 18, including her own. She lost her kids completely. Not will stay in contact. She absolutely can have no contact. And it's fair. I, you know, I feel bad for her, but she made her bed. After the sentencing, Timothy wrote a letter apologizing, which even the judge found insincere. In his letter, he justified a lot of his actions. Quote, I'm only done what I thought was best, unquote. He and his lawyer tried to point out that the corporal punishment was something that was done to him as a child. I know some folks really like the military style exercises, but last I checked, hanging a young boy upside down in, uh, you know, putting him in a closet and starving him wasn't part of that. However, in his letter, he references a new baby, a boy that was born while he was awaiting trial and that he's never been able to hold. I can't verify, but he told the judge if Kristen got any time, not only would she have lost Alex and Abby, but their new son too. Alex is with his father, like we said, and the younger two, because she had a new baby, she was pregnant at the time, the other two um, got safe homes as well. What did Timothy get? What was his time? Well, this is where I start to smile. He got five life sentences and 1,890 months, which is about 157.5 years. They are concurrent because there is no parole. Judge Warren C. Wooden said in his quote, if you are utterly failed, not only in the role of a parent, but simply in the role of being a human being, where does this leave our hero? Well, the owner of Mrs. Potato Restaurant started a GoFundMe as a reward fund because people wanted to contribute to uh, the manager's life. They raised over $60,000. You know what? She deserves all of it. She saved that little boy's life. When questioned if she was worried, she would get in trouble for calling the police on the customers that day. Flaviani said she didn't even consider herself. She just wanted Alex to be safe. For anyone who's curious, Mrs. Potato is a restaurant based around potatoes. It's considered a Brazilian-American fusion restaurant where everything looks amazing. It looks so good. Shortly after this incident, the owner took a picture of Flaviani holding up do you need help sign and put it on the wall. And she said, a hero works here. When asked about Timothy's sentence, Flaviani said, I feel relieved and with a sense of justice and gratitude that he got what he deserved. I also feel happy because the best thing is that the boy now lives a healthy life, protected and receiving a lot of love, affection, care, and respect. One last thing. A trust was created by Florida CPS, which is for all three children. It works like any other trust. Any donations go to a law firm and the trustee oversees the funds. Neither Kristen nor Timothy has any access to these funds. 
If you wish to contribute to their future welfare, I'll include the information down in the description box. I just have to say from the bottom of my heart that I really find her to be a hero. I'm so proud that she stepped up and saved him. And I know I've said that a million times throughout this video, but that is the message that I want to send today. We need to pay attention for the ones that in need and step forward to do something to change the situation. Let's leave a red heart in the comments to recognize Flaviani and who is the manager. And I'm sorry if I'm saying her name wrong. I, I say everybody's name wrong, sorry, but, and to recognize Alex. I just think they would love to see that, that people are, are still recognizing her very brave actions. Thanks to all my channel members and my Patreons who continue to support me. If you would like early access to new videos or decide the cases I cover next, you can do so by clicking the join button uh, in the description box, or you can head over to Patreon as well. Well, if you guys have made it to the end, you guys are rock stars and I love you to death. There are more true crime videos in my Crimey Cases playlist. If you'd like to check them out, stay safe, my loves. And remember, if you see something, say something. Bye.